Oh yeah. All right. So it's 11:40 p.m. on uh, what is that? Wednesday night. Yeah. So let me turn the music down again. Yep. 11:40 p.m. Wednesday night. I finished work for the day, for the week, really. So my plans for this evening are. Uh, setting up the triggers to do get and post requests. So we'll have a request type, a get or a post request. I'm thinking I'll add in the put and patch delete. Put, uh, patch and delete um, requests in there with a the URL and a body if it is so applicable. Um, so that means that when we trigger something, we can also send a, you know, HTTP request with that as well. So for example, if you wanted to send, um, say update some website with some variable, right? Whatever, um, you know, something, something, um, yeah, like, uh, update some database wherever saying that this thing's been completed this many times or uh, even if you've got some other automation system going on you can send a request to that thing um, you know whatever that could be on your local network it could be over the internet it could be wherever so that's the thing uh, the branch configuration for tonight also will be able to view delete and upload the audio and video files that are on the branch server um, so the purpose for this is when we have our game screens, um, if I can draw this uh, really crudely, so we'll have our branch server here. Uh, trying to draw through the camera sucks. Um, yes, branch server here. Now, what we'll do is inside the rooms, we'll have game screens inside the rooms that will display the timers and whatever what have you in there and might have a video of some person we might have another screen in here that might do something else might display just the hints right um so what what can happen here is if we if we don't hold the audio and video on the branch server um then that means that the brand that these screens then whatever's running them have to go off and grab that video from somewhere else but if the screens, uh, these screens are designed to run from the branch server, they're running from the branch server on that device, then the audio and video will be locally saved on that device. So meaning that you won't get any real input lag, it'll be just playing the video straight from there. You won't really be streaming it over a network connection or anything. So that should eliminate any kind of lag that you would get over the network that way. Um, and so, yeah, therefore having the audio and video locally on there is great. Now that doesn't mean that you can't play video from say YouTube or wherever it is on the net, but it's better off if you're going to have local audio and video that you play it from the branch server itself. So that's why I'm getting it to upload audio and video to and from there. Uh, also tonight is configuring the mesh nodes. So again, on this screen, for example, here, um, RFID, um, basically just we'll be able to configure what its common ID is, what its node type is. Um, if it is a, um, like, so if we say if it's a node type RFID, that's cool. Um, but if we have a, an action one that's got a relay on it, I want to be able to trigger those individual relays. I want to be able to trigger one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and that is on the agenda for tonight. Once that's done, it'll start wiring it up and we're good to go. All right, so it's happening. Uh, it's only taking us a little bit to get implemented um, HTTP requests. So I'm using this website called uh, webhook.site just to test. Uh, hang on a sec, I'll turn that off. Um, yeah, so basically this is just a test to see if my get, post, put, delete requests are working. So in the Christmas script, um, under triggers, I added the advanced part where you can say it's a get and here's the request URL if I've got a body um, and whatnot. All I've done is just added 
basically just this is a post request to the same thing and this is a put request and to the same thing and a delete request to the same thing and so if we go into here go to triggers and then we hit oh if i can see both of them this one are we gonna do it there we go you can see that the, that request is coming through there there's that post there's that put and here's the delete when it comes there we go okay and so that there says that we've got those fully implemented thingies going on here um, now the little issue that I have is that whenever I um, updated the script it didn't update on the back end so I needed to restart the root server because for whatever reason it wasn't updating the triggers so I've got to fix that now <laughs> <laughs> but this is sweet. So now we can practically control anything from anywhere on the internet with our ESP devices as of right now using these triggers. Boom, boom. All right, 4.13 a.m. update. So things we set out to do tonight. All right, was... Yep, get the triggers to do stuff, configure the branch audio video. Haven't quite done that part yet. Um, did this, did the post request stuff as we saw before. And now configure the nodes and also send actions to them. This, yes. Yes. So, I've only got one connector at the moment which is a little ESP over there which is actually physically hooked up as an RFID um, but if we you know go around go back into settings we click into this guy we can see all the settings of this we can see his last updated it you know friggin like a minute ago or whatever yeah there we go 414 36 yeah, so that's like now. Um, so we can change his ID, we can change his type. And so let's change his type to a relay. And if we do that, you'll notice once I click it, the little Raspberry Pi screen will send that message. And so what happens there is, where is it? Oh yeah, there we go, function change message relay. So basically what happens here is the ESP, that dude right here, this thing here, what, what happens with him is he gets reset. So um, what, what I have to optimize the, um, the program loops is that on device startup, it reads what type of node device it is. So, is it a relay? Is it an RFID? If it's any one of those things, start up all of those initialized functions for the pertaining module it's supposed to be. So, for example, for relays, it doesn't really have to start anything because the relays are just input-output pins, right? But for RFID cards, uh, you need, like, you know, all the RFID library stuff behind it. And so I don't want that stuff to load and be chogging up all of our little event loops and whatnot. So we just leave them behind. So what happens is that on startup, it reads from EEPROM and says, what are you? And it says, I am this. And then that is to find whatever it is. Anyway, so now we can change whatever it is. So if I just refresh the page by clicking this again, we notice that it is, oh, did I change it just to an RFID? No, I changed it to relay. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Now, because it's a relay, we've got all these actions we can send to it. These ugly ass buttons that I haven't styled properly yet. So now, this guy thinks he's a relay. He has all the code on him for a relay. And if we look at the heartbeat messages, we notice that they're all relay messages now. Because it thinks it's a relay. Which is pretty sick. But he's not a relay, he's an RFID. But I can still try and send him an action. So if I click this, we can see that it's, it gets sent an action. Yeah. Time taken to send. Ignore that time, that's a silly time. Um, 
Yeah, and so yeah, you can see it's sent the action packet to him and it's good to go. But obviously nothing happens, so whatever. But this is a quick, easy way to debug if your things are working or if they're not working the way they should be. So I'll just go back to RFID. And it takes like a, a good minute or so to get set properly. So I've got to maybe put a loading screen or maybe blank this node out until that time. Um, we can also change the ID of the node, but I mean, I'm not going to really do that. There's no point right now, but you can change the ID of the node. So if you wanted to have certain naming conventions, like in one room, you have everything prefixed, you know, in one to 50 and then the next is 50 to 100 and then, you know, 100 to 200 or whatever. You could make those whatever you would want. Um, so now we've got a completely programmable ESP32 from the user interface, writing to EEPROM, changing its function. Yeah, nuts. Anyway, all that stuff. It's now 4.20 in the morning. Um, I think I might just quickly, where was I? Do the uh, branch configuration and set up. Why does this make my hands look fat? Like I have some kind of fat hand. Whatever. Um, so that we can go in, config, edit the branch or whatever in here um, and add and edit friggin' uh, audio and video. So I've changed the script now so that we can. Um, so if we go to screen configurations into here, if you remember it used to be like video slash whatever and that would be our video. Now I've changed it to the full web address to whatever it should be. Now if it's a local address, it's obviously just going to load locally, right? But this also allows it, you to load it, uh, a video from the net somewhere. If this works, I tested it before. I would test it again, but I can't be bothered, it's very late. Um, yeah, and the screen configuration too, and whatnot. Um, yeah, all the same stuff as it was before, except that's the that's the difference now is that you can play any video from anywhere because I've removed that limitation that you could only ever play videos that were logged onto the branch server. Um, but I'm still going to make it so that you can uh, upload videos to your little branch server wherever that may be. So. You know, audio and video so you don't have to go and manually edit all these files and move things around and stuff and you just link to them through here and you're all good to go oh it's coming together it's coming together it's coming together oh. man I'm so wrecked it's a full day at work all unity stuff I mean I tell you man I tell you Dagio for strings is totally appropriate right now. Um, oh, but once that's done, once, once that is done, where is that little thing that I threw into this box? Uh, yeah, one of these dudes. So this is a little MP3 player. I don't know if you can read it, it's upside down. There you go, serial MP3 player. I've used these before with the Arduino. Pretty good, pretty cool. Um, so what I'll be using those for, I'll be putting them onto the ESP and um, onto one of these dudes and making that play tunes, basically, because there's um, there's some things that require this in our room. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's uh that's practically it. Look at all my relays just hanging around everywhere. Um, what I'm going to do is wire up these relays, a couple of them, um, into a power board like this, for example. I crack open one of these bad boys, slam one of these bad boys in there, um, and intercept that wiring so that then we can switch those power boards, basically. Um, like instead of having to hardwire a bunch of crap into these relays, I want to just be able to plug in some appliance and get that to run 
which is more appropriate for something you know that requires 240 or whatever um, you know and just a couple of those plus it makes it easier for anybody who wants to plug it in and it's a good proof of concept if I actually want to you know show people how these things really could be used really well um, yeah you see my desk is always a mess and I think that might be my last update for the night maybe not maybe so we'll see We'll see.